Welcome back to the next video in the series and what I'm going to do is a little bit of a departure from my normal uh, analysis of figures. Uh, I'm going to actually show you what we, we do in the company um, as far as global analysis and macroeconomic factors etc are concerned. This is part of our portfolio of what we do. Now we use a tool or a method of, 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 of examination of strategy called scenario analysis and it's basically a predictive tool and some of you may or not be aware of it but this was a, a very effective tool that was used by the Shell Corporation back in the, um, the late 60s, it was developed back in the late 60s early 70s and the um, main person who developed this tool and to very great effect and, to, uh, and made a lot of profit through its use for Shell was a, a chap called Pierre Wack and um, he basically, in my view, was the, the person who really developed modern scenario analysis. Now let's look at some of the, the stories of success that Shell had with this in comparison to its competitors. Um, with, with the Arab-Israeli oil crisis, the war, an oil crisis ensued in 1973. And for those of us who could remember, there was uh, gas queues all around the world basically because the OPEC nations shut off the, the flow of oil in retaliation for support for um, Israel. Now that's politics but that's the by and the by but generally what, what happened was an oil crisis. Shell, the executives in Shell headed by Pierre have analysed this particular scenario as a potential and therefore had developed strategies to mitigate the worst effects of that and, and as a result Shell far outperformed BP and all the other other uh, oil companies at the time and it was again put to use in 1979 where there was another great oil crisis which coincided with the Iranian um, revolution and then back in 1986 as well we had the uh, collapse in oil prices and so using various scenarios and planning for the results of those scenarios put Shell way out in front. So as a company what we do is we do our own form of scenario analysis as well so as we can put our investors in front because what we're doing is we're planning for outcomes based on current events that, 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 that may happen. So why use scenario analysis is basically what I said it, it, it's, 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 it's modeling potential future events that, that will happen or could happen and then basing strategies on them. Now you could say well that's all well and fine this is all hypothetical. Well, it's true it is hypothetical. It's, it, 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 the scenario analysis is built on hypotheticals and what you do is you deduct from existing events that are occurring and add potential perceived events on top of that and you come to a scenario that is, is, an, is a potential outcome and with that potential outcome you then can make strategies and plan for that and it's very very much in use in, uh, in, 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 in corporate management and, and, and oh gosh years ago I studied uh, I was introduced to scenario analysis doing an MBA program and I found it extremely useful um, for uh, preparing for outcomes that a lot of people haven't envisaged or haven't prepared for. So let me give you an example of, of how we would do an initial uh, scenario analysis in the company and how we would plan for it and, 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 and basically bear in mind that this is just a skeletal view. We have relatively more sophisticated tools within our arsenal to do this but let, let's just give you an overview of what's going on. So let's look, at the, um, let's look at the scenario at the moment. Well, let's look at the current events at the moment. Let's take the EU and the United States. Now, the EU bloc is, if one were to look at it from purely the US administration point of view, you'd say that the EU bloc is acting against EU, uh, US foreign policy, especially on countries like Iran, um, where the, 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 uh, the Trump administration has basically said it's been a very bad deal, they don't want to negotiate, that's all the politics. But bottom line is there, there is a, a, a divergence of of agreement between the US and EU administrations and that. And then we have very famously in the last few weeks Italy has done a, 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 a trade deal as it were uh, 
with China or potential trade deal with, along the Belt and Road. And, 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 and the US administration is very nervous, for want of a better term, of, of an ascendant or potentially ascendant China coming up and, and um, uh, threatening, for want of a better term, the US trade hegemony and uh, political hegemony in the world at the moment. So that's a very sensitive area, and, and even though Italy's doing that with Belt and Road, it's symptomatic that other European countries are now starting to look at that, which is putting warning bells up in the United States. And then there are many companies, for example, in the United States that still have, uh, and, their, and their industries that still have tariffs um, that the, e, the United States is not happy with, even though they're having negotiations uh, with China on tariffs and things like that. So there's things about that, in particular, the EU has uh, the EU backs companies that um, are exporting to the United States. But of late, what is of, of quite interesting note is the divergence between uh, in technology, um, potential technology threats that the United States has seen with China, and especially with one one company called I, I hope I've pronounced this right, Hawaii, Hawaii. And basically what they're claiming is that this company has introduced backdoor security threats and the U Americans are quite worried about uh, defence defense and um, communications um, holes that, that secrets can be taken, uh, technological spying can occur and secrets taken on both the European side and the US side. And they're quite sensitive to this on the military side, which brings me to NATO as well. I mean, Germany just does not pay its way on NATO. And they're even talking about a Franco-German defense force, but yet they don't pay their way on NATO. I think they pay close to 0.6% of their GDP, whereas countries like the United Kingdom and, and um, Poland pay, pay the 2%. So there's 500 billion um, of, 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 of expenses that the Americans see that are unfair. So there's a whole load of things going on. So what does this do? Well, let's think in a scenario, basically at the moment what it means is that we could almost deduct that from a point of view that the US is getting nervous about the power of the EU bloc, especially as far as going astray and negotiating and uh, undermining uh, American sanctions against Iran, Russia, uh, undermining things with China, uh, events with China. So. Let's just think of this scenario. What if, what if the, e, uh, the EU would be better for American foreign policy to be broken up? What if, what if, because think about it like this. If the EU wasn't existing, then America would have much more sway over countries like Germany, France, Italy on an independent basis and yet still maintain its trade relations with those particular countries. But it would have an enormously much more a greater amount of power to isolate ascending economies like China and potentially Russia. So here's a scenario for you. What if, and possibly it could be true, the, the, United, the US administration decided we no longer want the EU. We don't want the EU as a bloc. It's actually starting to work against our interests. If that were the case, then you would see the machinations starting to go ahead where this would occur. Now one of these things could be, for example, that the US has indicated to the uh, EU, if there's a banking crisis, the Federal Reserve is not going to help you. Hence Italy's um, approaches to China, as because possibly Italy has now realised that Germany doesn't have the resources to bail it out. So we're seeing a whole load of complicated things here that could actually be things that are going on behind the scenes. So this is how we can interpret events. So how do we use this as a tool? Well. If, say, for example, in scenario the EU breaks up, we now know that you cannot hold sovereign bonds because they're useless, because who's going to finance them if the European Union breaks up or is broken up through external influences and, and, and through crises? Um, the ECB doesn't exist, and therefore can't fund sovereign bonds, therefore deficits can't be funded, therefore zombie companies can't be funded because there's no uh, cheap, cheap finance for them to do, therefore there's more competition. And so potentially you have the investment scenario where you can't invest in European bonds on a, on a, on a, on a EU-wide basis because the euro potentially would not exist. You can't have the euro as a currency. And, and even more importantly, the instability in the banking side of things would mean that, and the company side of things would mean that you would have to, you'd basically not invest in bank shares, European bank shares, 
or European companies that are heavily dependent on debt subsidies from the EU quantitative easing equivalent. So it's just a scenario, but you see, the thing is that you could have a hundred scenarios, but already we can see that we've got some strategies in place should the EU disintegrate or the signs that the EU should disintegrate. But obviously you could have the scenario where the EU exists for the next 10 years, um, printing money, uh, bailing out Italy. So this is why we look at scenarios, extremely important. And we do use other software and, and, and things like, like that to, 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 to map paths of, of action. But that's something that we do uh, for our clients. So thank you so much for listening to this very basic uh, introduction to scenario analysis and why we use it. Now, for the next video, we're going to examine more about the US. Uh, we're going to look at some debt aspects um, that exist in the, the Russell 2000 that I think you should be aware of. But thank you so much again for listening and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.